What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Justice Falls. We back at it again with another video. Today we're checking out the Sonic Frontiers preview. This we've done two other videos on this with uh, IGN first, and this is the hands-on impression. So they actually got to play the game and test it out, and we're gonna see what they think about it. So without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, Sonic Frontier IGN first, hands-on. Let's get it. Sonic's done a lot in 30 years. He's been a pioneer Classic. of a high-speed 2D platformer, an Olympic athlete, a respectable kart racing enthusiast, a fighter, yeah, that game was a TV right. star, and a Hollywood blockbuster movie star as well. But he's never done open world, and Sonic Frontiers fixes to change that. I was fortunate enough to be one of the first people outside of Sonic Team to go hands-on with Sonic Frontiers. That's and tough. Let me just say, if you're worried about how the blue blur will fare in this unfamiliar genre, well, I think Crush 40 probably put it best. Open your heart. It's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like he liked it. Michael, Mr. Michael Saltzman. The first thing that struck me about Sonic Frontiers was how uniquely somber and serene it was right from the outset. After flying right. into a wormhole with Tails and Amy, Sonic finds himself separated from his friends and all alone on an isolated island, with nothing but an AI voice guiding him to collect the Chaos Emeralds. There's no one for Sonic to bounce quips off of, no energetic Crush 40 soundtrack, just wide open fields as far as the eye can see. There's an air of mystery in Sonic Frontiers, and it's a vibe that's driven home even further by the beautiful yet minimalist piano melodies that accompany Sonic as he explores the island. Okay. It's, it's, it's definitely a change of pace from what we're used to. All of this is a very intentional choice. I asked Sonic Team head Takashi Izuka to describe how the tone of Sonic Frontiers differs from previous Sonic games. And he said, past games in the Sonic series have taken different tones depending on their stories and themes. But this time, these mysterious islands are the game's major setting. Okay. And that's why our artists have worked hard to create a mysterious mood. Of course. The so does that mean the whole game is going to be wide open and slow paced? like this because that's i understand what he's saying but that's not that hasn't been the identity of sonic games no matter what world it was in the element of speed and quick reaction time and high up tempo music has always been a part of sonic no matter what no matter what no matter how you change the landscape or the gameplay or the plane of field that that is on the big new change so that to me that's cap what he, what he just said and i don't even say cap like that that so that's how you know I mean it. Sonic Frontiers is the shift from purely linear levels to a huge open world where Sonic can freely run in any direction. But Sonic Team doesn't like to use the term open world to describe Sonic Frontiers gameplay, instead referring to its style as being open zone. Open world games Same like thing, bro. other AAA games fundamentally have RPG or adventure worlds. For Sonic, the core here is a 3D action game. Our basic idea was to have that take place in open space. What sets Sonic Frontiers apart is this different approach to an open game world. Having played it's not Sonic really that Frontiers different, though. about four hours, it's easy to see what Izuka-san means. Sonic Frontiers' open zone design is very... And why didn't they capture his gameplay? Because this, this seems to be the developer's gameplay. Because this is the same gameplay that we've been seeing since the first... Since the... Uh, from, the, from the first video, pretty much. Except the combat video, it showed, obviously, combat. But I wonder if this is the developer's gameplay or this IGN's gameplay. They haven't specified. Either way, it's the same thing we've seen. Very different from any other open world I've played. It's a giant playground. Every few feet, there's a bumper spring that bounces you like a pinball between five other bumpers before putting you on one of the many grindable rail tracks. Or a speed ramp that sets you on a completely different path leading to some other collectible or reward. Or mm. a line of rings that you can light speed dash into. That's cool. I'll admit, that I like stuff like that. Every Sonic level having multiple paths that eventually loop back around to the main one and applied that to these giant non-linear open zones. One thing that has to be noted is that very few of these elements are built into the environmental design, meaning that rails, platforms, boost rings, and so on are just inexplicably floating in the air all around, which isn't totally unusual for a Sonic game, but it feels especially jarring in Frontiers in particular yeah because of the frequent and sudden pop-in of these objects and the otherwise very naturalistic art style. Yeah, if you listen to my other my other reactions, I said that. I was like, this is kind of weird looking. It's just like you just have rings and platforms and speed ramps everywhere. And usually I'm, I'm really good at suspending my disbelief 
when I play video games. But, like, that was just really off-putting to me. Just a bunch of rings and platforms and all that. Just everywhere. Of course, it's worth emphasizing that this gameplay and the version that I played were from an early build. But this is definitely an area that I would hope to see improvement in the final. Okay, so he said so it was from an earlier build. So that's this is not his gameplay. So he played a different version of the of the game than this. So this is not his gameplay. And I like how you have that you don't have to just float in the air when you go down. You have that dash down so you can get to the floor quicker. I like that. Version. Beyond that, there are also a wide variety of puzzles and challenges that are littered throughout the zone. And completing mm. them is how you uncover sections of your map. Most of these are very simple, requiring you to orient the statue the correct way, quickly hop back and forth between colored tiles, or use Sonic's new side loop ability to draw circles around certain objects in the environment to interact with them. The best ones, though, are the races against the clock where you have to get from point A to point B in a limited amount of time. Okay, I like Even that. The Bringing the speed element. Make straightforward races like these a ton of fun because you have to try and improvise a path to the end that might not be immediately obvious. Okay. If Mark, Mr. Cartoon, oh, that Modelo. Didn't have the fighting spirit I love me the Modelo, passion. so. If you like Modelo's, comment, comment in the chat, Modelo. Legend. Sonic new tricks. Not the chat, the comment section. Yeah. There are some exceptions, but combat in traditional Sonic games generally isn't a thing that goes much deeper than jumping, mm. rolling, or using a homing attack into enemies at the right time. That changes in Sonic Frontiers, which now has you fighting all sorts of wandering enemies and mini bosses using an all new array of incredibly flashy attacks. It's yeah, I, I like the no attacks. Sonic is able to quickly dodge using the bumper buttons on the gamepad, and by pressing them together, he can even parry attacks with the right timing. His homing mm. attack also feels much more powerful, landing with a ton of impact and keeping Sonic stuck to his enemy, allowing for a flurry of follow-up strikes. One of the things I really appreciate... I like that attack a lot. That's cool. ...is that there are usually multiple ways to deal with specific enemies. Like, take for example, this guy, who has an impenetrable shell that he can expand into spinning blades and throw at you. One way to deal with him is just to carefully time your homing attacks so you don't get hit by the blades. But if you do that, the window to damage him is small. To increase yeah. that window, you can either parry the blades and knock them away right before they hit you, or you can even use Sonic's side loop ability to encircle the enemy, which causes the shell to go flying upwards. And then you can do that. I like that attack. That attack is cool. The attack animations are dope. That's the best thing I've seen so far. XP that you can use to purchase new skills from a skill tree, which gives Sonic Frontiers a really nice feeling of power progression even in just the relatively short amount of time that I played. Some of the later skills that you can get are just unbelievably cool. And it's super satisfying to see Sonic Team experiment with different ways that Sonic can attack enemies beyond just spins, jumps, and bumps. In addition to these smaller enemies, there are also the a big old boss fight bosses that I had to contend with. These are near Shadow of the Colossus-esque in their scale, with one in particular against a beast named Osura requiring Sonic to bait the Titan to slam the ground and then boost up its arm in order to reach the weak So this is Osura right here. It's an ambitious boss battle, far beyond anything I've seen in the Sonic series to date, but it's also the part of the game that needs the most work. Far too often, I'd fly off the boss's arm without knowing why, or I'd get to the top and for some reason lack the momentum needed to actually reach the head. Sonic must hunt down and defeat these bosses mm. in order to collect portal gears, which open up portals that lead Oh, you can climb up him. Okay, they didn't show that before. ...in the style of previous Sonic games, giving Sonic Frontiers a nice mix of both old and new styles. These classic levels each come with a handful of mm. obstacles, like being the level under a certain time, collecting all the red rings, and so on, with each goal rewarding you with a vault key, which are needed to unlock the coveted Chaos Emeralds. You need that. You need those chaos emeralds. Sonic Frontiers is an exciting new step forward for the Sonic series into uncharted territory. And based on my time with it, Sonic Team seems to have hit upon a winning formula. There's certainly still work to be done before it's released during the holiday season. There's a lot of distracting pop in. Oh, so it's coming out this year. amount of bugs still left to be squashed, and the big boss fights could do with some tweaking. But ultimately, my time with this early build answered the one question I had on my mind. Will Sonic's one-of-a-kind gameplay translate into an open world? The answer is a resounding absolutely. Thanks for watching, and tune into IGN for more Sonic Frontiers coverage as part of IGN First. And for everything else, keep it here. Keep it here. An idea. Oh, you can dash in midair, too. I will notice that.
Yeah, these are the ones we did already. But yeah, okay, so cool. So um definitely definitely we got a more in depth look from somebody that actually played the game outside of the, the Sonic team. So he said a lot of the things that I said in my review video. It's just like it's more wide open. You know, the emphasis in the, in the developer itself, he said the emphasis is more focused on an open, a wide open experience, explorative experience. But I think in order for it to excel and be a greater Sonic game, you need that speed element. You need the element of speed. You need that music and that and you need that adrenaline to you know, truly make the game great and truly make the game what it is, which is a Sonic game. I understand you want to step out of the box every now and again, but why go away from something that was, that is basically the foundation of the series? Why go, why go away from that and, and, in order and go the opposite direction? It's okay to go away from it for a little bit, but to go completely opposite, I don't know. Maybe just this first level is like that, where it's like less focus on speed and more focus on exploration. But I like to see some of the other levels and some of the other battles that you're going to encounter later in the game, because that speed element has to be there. And that music, you can't just play that somber piano, the whole, the whole game. You know, I'm pretty sure that that piano is just for this world right here. And when you beat the world, you get, you know, I think what will happen is ideally what I would like to happen is, is if a game starts out slow like this for the first few levels, and then it just ramps up. It just ramps up in speed. And the levels get not smaller, but like more like condensed. Like more like condensed where you can get you can pick up some speed. You know, so that that's what I hope would will happen. But um I don't know. I mean, I, I gotta get my at this point, for me to fully get my opinion on it, I gotta get my hands on it. So hopefully there'll be a beta or a demo coming out before it comes out this holiday season. So that's all we can hope for at this point until they reveal more. But um, you guys already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is your boy, Justin Falls, and we out. One.